Good morning. Has anyone else been searching for that routine since the new year began? I mean, you would think we were getting used to it by now. There's not really a lot of things to consider. Do I go for a walk? Do I go to the shops? Maybe it's like making healthier habits or choices. Maybe it's some self-care or a new interest or hobby. Perhaps it's just the same old school, work, Netflix, going to the shop, going for a walk. Perhaps like me, you still haven't gotten used to any of this. Perhaps we're not supposed to get used to any of this. You know, I spoke last time about hope beginning again. How even in the midst of struggle and difficulty that God shines his light and leads the way. How that light can bring clarity and it can bring structure to the chaos that is around us. We're in the middle of a global pandemic amidst restrictions and lockdowns. And perhaps like me, you continue to need that hope again and again, even on a daily basis. You want to read a verse this morning from Matthew and these are the words of Jesus and he poses a question and he says, Are you tired? Are you worn out? Burned out on religion? Come to me, get away with me and you will recover your life. I'll show you how to take a real rest. Walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn the unforced rhythms of grace. I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me and you will learn to live freely and lightly. You know, perhaps you're more familiar with these verses. Come to me, all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you'll find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You want to speak for a moment about expectations and what's weighing you down? What are you labouring with? What is it that's wearing you out? It might be your job. It might be all the rules that you've had to take on amid so much change and challenge. But often it's the unseen things, the anxieties, the fears, the uncertainties, the what ifs the unknown. And what is it that ties all of these things together? It's expectation. You know, it's dictionary defined as a strong belief that something will happen or will be the case. Like when it comes to our anxieties and fears, often we have a strong belief that that thing that will happen or will be the case is negative. It's the worst case scenario. It's the destruction and disaster of whatever the circumstance could be. And those are the things that I find weigh heavy upon us and there's a great price to pay. Rarely do we believe for the best. That's our human nature. It's our instinctual protective mechanism, a way of avoiding disaster. But as I said, we can pay a heavy price for expecting the worst. Sometimes even our overwhelmingly positive expectations can leave us in a worse state because they were unrealistic or they were misplaced. You know, those feelings when you thought that everything would work out or it was just going to be fine or surely, and then you can just insert whatever that bad thing that might happen could be, surely that thing couldn't happen. And so that's sometimes our unrealistic or misplaced positive expectations that can leave us in that worse state. But I'm sure like me, you're trying to manage through all of these unseen emotions, those anxieties and fears and struggles and just lack of motivation for what's going on around us. Ultimately, our expectations are a result of us trying to work it all out. The present, the future, that next thing that we have to face. We all gather expectations to help us navigate through and navigate the way forward. You know, one of my favourite self sayings is knowing what I know, what did I expect? And I sort of said to myself all the time, like, what did I expect that would happen with that thing? Knowing what I know, if I take a moment, step back and consider all the parts of that circumstance, what did I expect? And often 
are misplaced or uncommunicated expectations are the thing that catches us out. And for me, there's something to be said about managing our expectations. You know, if I can learn to better manage them, then maybe they might not wear me out just as much. And better yet, what if I brought them to Jesus? Like Jesus says in that verse, come to me. What if I laid them at his feet? What if I rested from them even just for a while? What if I learnt from him? What if I watched how he did it? What if I read how he did it? What if I didn't pick them all up again? There's something to be said for managing our expectations, bringing them to God and allowing him to give us rest. You know, when I think of expectation, I think of just finding the motivation and and finding the way ahead. And one of the things that we all need and, and we all look for is a routine. You know, I mentioned about finding a routine. I wonder what yours is. Coffee in the morning, a walk at lunchtime, a tub of ice cream every night. What about the unhealthy ones? It's kind of a bit of a joke because eating a whole tub of ice cream every night isn't very healthy. But sometimes we can develop unhealthy routines. You probably have some, I have mine. Even the best of our intentions can sometimes become a cruel master that we have to serve. Our routine, the way we've structured our day or our week or even our lives, what we are comfortable with, what we've gotten used to, what we learn to accept or live with. Sometimes we're not disciplined enough. Sometimes we are way too hard on ourselves. You know, if you were to consider your routine during this last month, what would you see? Or even better, what would you learn? A routine can become like a religion for our souls. And in that verse of Matthew, Jesus says, are you burnt out on religion? Is your routine, is your way of doing things, is your expectations, has it burnt you out? Has it left you deflated and lifeless, struggling with motivation and struggling to continue on? What about those unhealthy parts of us where we serve them relentlessly in the hope and the expectation of a better life or things will get easier or better and maybe just a little bit of context to this you know we have tried to build in a few healthy habits as a way of staying sane to get through the week you know we started going for walks in the evening most weeknights and it's been good to get outside maybe you're the same and it's been good to move a little it's been good to get off the sofa Sometimes it's cold and sometimes it's wet and it's part of a good routine. We feel better even in those times, but there's some days that we don't walk. And I don't get that good feeling after of, of having been outside and taking a break and getting out of the house. And usually it's just too wet or we have plans. And when I say plans, I usually mean like another Zoom call to do in the evening or something similar. But that's one of the routines that we have sort of established and built in and it's about finding that balance between allowing it to work for us or allowing us to work for it and another routine that Lynn has sort of brought in is with the the kids being at home and learning it's preparation and planning and getting it all set out on the table you know in the morning getting them dressed and down and getting them started and you know it's been really helpful to to do that for For us and you know it's hard sometimes it's really really hard and even at times we don't even try to do any school work at all there's just some of those days that we need that break and you're probably judging us as as parents but you know we're both still working full-time from home and we're managing projects and different responsibilities and the kids are tired or they're bored and maybe they haven't spoke to any other people apart from their parents for three days straight and I mean speaking to your parents just for three days straight is is a challenge in itself and so sometimes the best choice in that routine that we have created is to change it to take a break to manage it a bit better manage our own expectations of what that would be and sometimes it's managing the expectation of having everything completed by lunchtime and then having the rest of the day free it's just unrealistic or not working for that particular day for those particular people 
maybe what we need to do is change routine to rest a little more. You see, there's rest for the body and then there's rest for the soul. Even our kids need to live freely and lightly with all that they're dealing with and doing. You know, the question is, is your routine serving you or are you serving it? Is it working for you or are you working for it? And so we have to be careful with our routine. And an alternative to the routine is the rhythm. And then that verse speaks about the unforced rhythms of grace. And I really like that word, rhythm. Um, what's the difference? It's a good question. Think of it like this. The rhythm is the pattern or it's the thing, the pattern, the template on which everything else flows. You know, think of that song that you just find moves you in a certain way. You feel it more than you hear it. It's the rhythm together with the instruments and the lyrics that move you or cause you to feel a certain way. It flows. And like a routine, it's still dependable. It still has a structure, but it's within a larger sphere, which is more flexible. The best example I can give is that church song that just keeps going on and on and on and on. And we've been singing the chorus six times already. And then it's just one more time. And then it's just one more time. Or maybe just a few extra times will sort of help the whole situation. And soon the words that we're singing lose some of their meaning and your lips are moving and there's sound coming out. But you have disengaged from whatever it is supposed to be about. You're just wanting it to be over. That's a routine. Versus the rhythm. Rhythm takes us somewhere. It's familiar, but it's also leading. The rhythm rises and the rhythm falls and you anticipate the flow and you sense the motion. It has a flexibility to it. It brings life and it's a joy to engage. And so may your routines become more like rhythms this week. May you learn a certain flexibility. May you learn a rise and a fall. May you learn to rest greater in Jesus as you bring all of those expectations and unseen things that weigh us down and wear us out. May we bring them to him this week. You know, we're, we're speaking about the unforced rhythms of grace and Jesus says, walk with me and work with me. Watch how I do it. Learn those unforced rhythms of grace. And he promises, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Sometimes we lay them on ourselves, but God's promise is that he won't lead us to a place where it is heavy and ill-fitting. Because when we keep company with him, we learn to live freely and lightly. And that's even in the midst of great challenge and struggle and difficulty of changing of rules and responsibilities, of learning from home, of working from home, of doing extra shifts, all that we have to do of not being able to meet together in a building to restrictions on times that we can spend with loved ones and outside. God promises that even in the midst of this world and life. Those unforced rhythms of grace, the leading of the Holy Spirit as it guides and as it comforts us, even in the greatest challenge that we face, especially in the greatest challenge that we face. May we make him our company and our companion in our morning rise and in our evening walks, in our preparations and in our practice, in your coffee or your tea break, on your journey home, wherever you find yourself, may you find rest in him. You know, I believe that God's grace is most prominent in our lives in the times of our greatest struggle. I like to think grace, of God's grace as him opening the door, of him making a way where there doesn't seem to be any way, where he extends his life and his promise to us in contrast to our own, you know, we can't do it on our own, but God has already opened the door. Perhaps we didn't even help, but God has opened the door. Perhaps even there's times where we do all that we can to avoid and run away and ignore 
or even cause our own circumstances to fail and to fall. And yet the door is still open because he opens it every time. His door of grace, he opens, bidding us to come, leading us on. And you may be familiar with the the verse in Revelation where it says, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. And if anyone hears my voice and opens the door, I will come in to him and dine with him and he with me. And that's the promise of salvation from God, the creator, that he knocks that door of our hearts at that very early stage of revelation to who he is and what he's done for us. And we open the door and allow him in and he transforms and changes us from the inside out. And then he keeps that door open for us to walk with him, towards him. And we live the lives that God has called us in the unforced rhythms of grace, managing our expectations, building a rhythm of joy rather than a routine that we work for. And so may this week, whatever you're doing, whatever you have in front of you, may you find your rest in him, bring it to him, come to him, bring all that you have and find your rest in him. Amen. If all I know of harvest is that it's worth my patience, then if you're not done working, God, I'm not done waiting.